Hello and welcome to the third and possibly final garden review. This is the 2011 car of the year as voted uh, by numerous automotive publications. So yeah, it's the 2011 Nissan Leaf and this is fully charged. Now, I've had this car from new. Uh, this was imported, <coughs> excuse me, in 2011 uh, from Japan. This was made in Japan, in Nissan's main factory in Japan. It was the first uh, batch of Nissan Leafs to be exported from Japan. I think there were something like 400 that came to the UK around that time. And this was in fact a press car. So I had this car for a, 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 as a loan car in uh, 2011 and I went, this is brilliant, I love it. So I rang up this and I said, do you want to sell it? Because <laughs> they were quite hard to get then. There was, you, you, you can remember 2011, virtually zero charging infrastructure. There was nothing. Uh, you know, I, I, I plugged this into a three pin socket in my house. That was all I had. It took a, a long time to charge it. Um, so that, you know, right back then, this really was an exceptional machine. And it was, uh, you know, just, this was the, the thing that convinced me that my daft notion that electric cars might be, become a, a genuine challenge to the internal combustion engine within my lifetime. Th this was the car that convinced me I might not be quite as idiotically stupid as would appear at the time. I am about to present my first drive of a car that was absolutely designed from the ground up as an electric vehicle and it is an extraordinary piece of engineering. Oh, I've just started moving. <laughs> <laughs> so since then, I've driven this car over 65,000 miles. The first thing I think it's important to say is nothing has ever gone wrong with it. So this is a first generation, brand new model car made by a big car maker that makes diesels and petrol engines and is really good at it, but they never made an electric car before. This was their first one, mass produced, designed from the ground up as an electric car. So it was this and the Renault Zoe with these two groundbreaking cars. They weren't converted uh, versions of an already existing vehicle that had been a petrol car, which is basically what everyone else did at this time. The only people who did this, three companies you could sort of argue, Tesla, well that's, they were completely different. At the time you got this, you could only get the Roadster, which is like 120,000 quid, two-seater, really cramped little sports car. The Renault Zoe and the, the Nissan Leaf were the first proper built from the ground up as electric vehicles and it makes a big difference. They're much better when cars are built as electric cars and not converted petrol ones. So this one, as you can see, it's got, still got the sticker. It's still got the sticker, the car of the year 2011. So it made a big impact in that time. The big drawback with it, which was always the case, is the range. So this is an air-cooled battery. It has no built-in cooling system. The batteries in Nissan Leafs do degrade faster, certainly in this one, than they would in a car that you bought today. Um, I think it's a big problem that, that Nissan have refused to change because uh, all the other car manufacturers use uh, heating and cooling the batteries. The Renault Zoe, you know, similar car, similar price. When you plug that in and it's charging at 22 kilowatts, you hear the fans come on. This thing, you can charge it at 50 kilowatts, nothing. There's no fans because there are no fans. That, I'd say, is the downside of this car. Everything else about it, and including all the follow-on leafs, which because it basically improved and improved, have been have proven to be incredibly reliable incredibly sturdy cars really really well made everything else never not one bulb has gone in the lights not one brake has failed not one the, those that's a new wiper blade that was expensive that is a new wiper blade i had to get on the back uh, so that wore out that was about two years ago i got that 
But one of the things that's really special, I think, about this car and that I really, I really get a bit obsessed with, I admit, is how I charge it. So because we've got, we've, you've seen the other two cars we drive, the, the Tesla Model 3 and the, the Kona. Those are charged in whatever way we can at the moment, hugely uh, by the sun. But this car, I make a special effort because the battery is not that big. It doesn't take that much electricity and we don't drive it that far ever. But in the last four years, since we've had a Zappi charger, this car has only been charged on solar power. So in the winter, that's slightly more complicated because I'll use whatever solar power I can to top it up, but I keep it pretty topped up. I make sure, and if there is a sunny day, then I absolutely enforce every possible kilowatt hour I can into the car. Uh, and I reckon I've done somewhere between 12 and 15,000 miles just on solar power alone, nothing else at all. And I think that is amazing. The things I've had to sort out over the years, tires, I've had two punctures, uh, so I've had to replace two tyres. I've actually now replaced all four tyres since I've had it. Um, they're, they're all new. So I have them swapped around. This car has never remotely broken down. One time, one time only, and I did it on purpose, I made it run out. Oh, where's it gone there? Ah, it stopped. That's it, I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. What a brilliant place to stop. That's it. <laughs> I wanted to know what happened with an electric car when it ran out, and I'll tell you what happens, it stops. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. It just stops. Um, I want to tell you some of the really good things that Nissan did with this car right at the beginning, which a lot of other, car, a lot of other electric cars don't do, including Tesla. You plug this car in here, you can tell instantly if it's charging, because there's these three lights up here that light up and flash and tell you, and if it's very empty, it's only the one is doing, if it's middle, middle full, two go, and when it's absolutely full, all three are lit. That is really useful because you can see from outside. You don't have to go in and check on the dashboard to see if it's really plugged in. Because, you know, when you, particularly when you first use electric cars, you're never sure of those things. One of the annoying things, this is an annoying thing, that, look, can't open that here. So I have to go inside and do that and pull the wretched thing and then it opens. That's bloody annoying. There's nothing on a key. Later models of Nissan Leafs, you had a key and it would go just And the first year I had it, I always, always opened the bonnet because the two catches are right next to each other. Kind of annoying. But this has Chadamo, Chadamo 50 kilowatt charging and Type 1. So it's a smaller connector. Just so annoying. So you can't use a standard Type 2 cable. I've got a Type 2 to Type 1 cable. Another annoying thing, there's no light. So if it's dark, you can't see where the thing is. Uh, and later models all had lights and most new cars have, have lights, which just, just to help you find how to charge it. That is a new battery there. A 12 volt battery for the ignition system so for the the wipers the lights all that stuff all run off a standard 12 volt battery which is trickle charged by a little solar panel on the back roof so cute so if it, in the summer you really don't have to worry about it but that one did fizzle out the original one because i'd left the car for too long there was a period of time when we didn't use it for a long time it was sitting dormant and that did die sadly my fault again <laughs> this is one of the most expensive things to keep going that is where you put your your screen wash, so you know you have to do that all the time. When I fill that up, it costs about one pound twenty-five to to fill it up with screen wash and water. Uh, that's that's like a hundred and hundred and twenty miles easily in this car, if not more. If I was buying the electricity, which I'm not, so that's one of the most expensive parts of the car. Now the interior of the car is really good. It's very, very comfortable, easy to look after, easy car. We had two dogs until fairly recently and they trashed the interior. Um, and we had it, the only time we've ever done it, we had it professionally cleaned. Uh, they, they did their best. Um, and sadly, both those dogs have now passed away. One is buried there and the other one is buried over there. So there we go. This is also a <laughs> garden dog cemetery as well as a studio now. Um, the sat nav is, you know, less than brilliant, but it, it's worked. I've found places on it. It's, you know, it's, it's of its era. 
one of the early episodes I made when this car first came out was I gave Carlos Ghosn. You may have heard of him more recently because he was in a bit of trouble in Japan. Then they packed him in a music case and smuggled him out of the country to the Lebanon. I mean, what an amazing story. Someone's got to make a movie about that. He's an extraordinary man, absolutely extraordinary man, but he was accused of embezzling huge amounts of money from Nissan or something, I don't know. But he was certainly pivotal and vitally important in the development of this vehicle. What's interesting about the battery is that when I uh, joined Nissan in 1999, at the beginning of the restructuring and the reorganization of the company, I reviewed all the research programs that Nissan was going on. And right. in fact, we, we dropped and we cut about 50% of them because they were leading nowhere. Yeah. One of the programs I kept was the research on batteries. Right. Nissan was already advanced in terms of battery research. And um, in 1999, I had no clue where it would lead us, but I said, this idea has the potential, we never know. Mm -hmm. we, we kept it and we developed it. And when we decided in 2006, 2007 to launch an electric car, this was mainly because the development on the battery technology. Right. But it happened within Nissan. Exactly. Right. It happened right. Within, yeah. within, within Nissan. But the idea of saying, can we reestablish uh, the, the electric car as one of the mainstream technology uh, of the automotive uh, of the automotive industry was always present right because we solved so many problems by yeah. bringing an electric car to the market yeah So, okay, because it's all to do with the range. This is all, it's all about range, this car. It always has been all about range. So, when, I, when this car was, came out new, it had a 24 kilowatt hour battery. The range, when it was brand new, if you drove it really carefully, you would get sort of between 80 and 95 miles, depending on the time of year and how you drove it. It was very much dependent on that. Um, that range did drop. There's no question about it. I've now lost two battery bars on this car. Because, and, they, and here's one of the things I learnt um, when it was serviced and when they did when they analysed the battery. So rapid charging, which early on was, you know, a lot of people said, oh, if you rapid charge the batteries, it's going to damage it. It's going to uh, decrease its capacity and decrease the range. None of the, not absolutely untrue. It doesn't damage it at all. If, if anything, it's good for the thing. What is really, really bad, which we did definitely a lot for the first two years we had it. The car's in the garage. It's plugged in. It's, it's full. It's full. Been, it's charged overnight, you unplug it, you drive it down the shop four miles, drive it back another four miles, eight miles, plug it in again. No, no, not especially not this age car. The battery management did not deal with that well. So we were topping up an almost full battery. It was at like 97% and we'd be filling it again. That is really bad for it. That's what damaged it. Not rapid charging and not the number of charges we did. From when it was empty, it was fine to plug it in when it's empty. It's very sensible, but not when it's nearly, nearly full. And it was the kind of habit of when the car's in the garage, you plug it in, particularly when it's got more limited range. So now it's about 55 miles in the summer, 45 in the winter. I'm not arguing in any way that that is acceptable. It really isn't. But weirdly, it is still usable because actually we've got shops that are seven or eight miles away. So it's 14, 15 miles there and back. The car does it easy, it doesn't even, you know, it's not a problem. But if I was going to drive further, it, then it is a problem. So I drove this car to Bristol, which is 67 miles or something from here. I had to stop to charge it on, on a 67 mile drive, which is not good. For a long time now, I've been toying with getting an, a new battery for it because I've had it nearly 10 years and it cost me nothing to run now. It's such a cheap car to run. No tax, no road tax, no fuel costs, m minimal service costs. So little, it, it's embarrassing. It's such a cheap car. There's no petrol car on the market, no diesel car on the market that is anywhere near as cheap as this car is now of this age. If, you, if this was a diesel car, it would have had so many spare parts, so much servicing. It would have used so much fuel, thousands and thousands of pounds worth of fuel. It would have burnt pointlessly in its clunking Victorian age steam technology engine. Anyway, in Amsterdam, there is a battery on a shelf for this car, ready and waiting for me, 40 kilowatt hours at 98% of health. Now, it will have been stripped out of, I would imagine, a crash damaged 
uh, an old other Nissan Leaf, but with a 40 kilowatt hour battery. And here's the crucial thing. That battery fits into this car like that. No trouble, no adaption, nothing at all. It plugs straight in. So I'm really intrigued to know what range this car will have when it has a 40 kilowatt hour battery. It's not quite double the capacity that it started with, but it's pretty close. And I'm thinking if this car has, let's say, at a conservative estimate, about 140, 130, 140 mile range, is transform it. It will transform it. And I'm now so pleased I've kept it because I was thinking about, well, do I sell it? You know, it's the only car I actually own. All the other cars we've got, we, we lease. I own this car. I've decided I'm going to keep it. It's a classic, <laughs> even though it's scratched and dented, it will become a classic. So I'm, I've just loved driving it. But it's been such a brilliantly solid, reliable car. All the disadvantages that people would worry and concern themselves about in 2010, 2011, about electric cars, they were all manifested in this vehicle. The charging infrastructure wasn't up to it. It took too long to charge. It didn't have the range. They were much too expensive. I mean, this is well over 30,000 pounds, 32, 33,000 pounds new. A car that did a, less than 100 miles. You know, every single compromise and restriction was absolutely accurately uh, uh, pointed to this car. But I'm really pleased to have had this car this long now because it does show you how long it lasts. And the batteries haven't died. They haven't kind of stopped working. It's 11 years old. It's done 65 and a half thousand miles. I can't even remember, maybe more than that. And uh, it is incredibly reliable. It still works. It's perfectly good. You know, I can drive it. I could drive it now to Cheltenham, which is 30 miles away and drive it back. You know, it's easy. That stuff is easy. It would be pretty empty when I got back if I did that. Uh, it's hills as well. There's definitely things wrong with it. But for, for 10 months of the year in this country, it is a fantastically useful, brilliant, reliable car. Anyway, that's really all I want to say about it. I'm so excited about getting a new battery in it. It is so frustrating that we can't do that now. We, were booked to, we, were, we had booked to work out to do it at the end of April. So annoying that it isn't possible. But that's a pretty universal annoyance. Everybody's, everybody's struggling with all this nonsense we're going through at the moment. Uh, so I'm not even going to mention all the normal things. You know them. I've said them many times before. Patreon, subscribe. I've mentioned them. Shouldn't have mentioned them. Forget I mentioned them. But as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.